Where did you park? This way. How far? Two and a half blocks. Should we take a cab? <laughs> well, we got it, buddy. Got the space. We got the space. We got it. We're, we're, Your we're, dream space. The Your dream, dream space. dream neighborhood. It was the one that I liked the most because it was new. And that is sure that no one rubbed their genitals all over it like <laughs> the old space. I'll be interested to see what we do with it because yeah, it's a lot more uh, bare than I remember. <laughs> and smaller than I remember. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot smaller. Well, because the second space was actually larger, just shittier. Right. Um, it was large and shitty. And that's why when we were like, let's go with that one, it falls through. So then we're left with the one that's more expensive <laughs> and smaller. But it's in the cooler neighborhood. It's in but, the cooler neighborhood. But we don't shoot the show in the neighborhood. No, but we should start. <laughs> we should. Every show should start kind of like a Saturday put a table Night Live right opening here. where it's just like us walking to the <laughs> studio. But we shoot a unique, <laughs> a unique opening for every show of us arriving to the studio. This, by the way, welcome to Matthew Cabotacaz's old street. But now he has to either take a subway or bill us for a ridiculous lift because we went 20 minutes over. <laughs> so we're getting chairs so we can sit down and test the focal length of our new cameras to see how this shit's gonna look. Because uh, we have to have a custom built table that is gonna look best based on my sort of idea of how I want this to look. So Joe brought some of our shitty old chairs, which you probably heard the, the creaks of in every single episode of Giant Slayer <laughs> from episode 200 on. A million dollars a year on Patreon and we have $19 chairs. <laughs> oh, I am so glad we're here though, man. This yeah. is, this just, it adds something. It kind of makes you excited to go to work, but yep. more excited to go to the bar after work. For sure. Um, which, since it's St. Patrick's Day, we have to do today. Hold on, let me just take a quick break. I'm sort of finish my coffee. Mm. So I used to bartend on St. Pat's back in the day in Hell's Kitchen. And I would start, well, they'd be rolling shifts. People would come in like every hour. And I mean, they were 14 hour shifts. And they were brutal because it was just non-stop. But it would start with all the cops and firefighters who finished the parade and they don't have to work that day. And so they just come in and get blackout drunk. Yeah. So it ruined it for you, like what is normally a nice celebration. Well, I hate St. Patrick's Day because of it. <laughs> and the Irish. Because of it? Or no, for just, other that's unrelated. <laughs> unrelated. My unrelated hatred for the Irish. <laughs> I'd say you really started that for me. <laughs> I didn't have a problem with them before I met you. Oh, well, welcome to the new John. After you, buddy. You want to see where dreams are made? Come on in. Thanks. Thanks, bud. Uh, well, it's raw. That's for sure. It's a raw space. But it's when I see a raw space, space, you know what I see? Possibility. <laughs> <laughs> this place reeks of possibility. This was the first place that we looked at. And uh, I just loved it because the building is brand new. Absolutely new. I love things that are new. Uh, they're, most of the offices are still open here. They're not even completely full because people are still filling it up with businesses. When we saw the second place, it was definitely larger, which we want a lot of space for the, the concept of how this is going to be shot. But uh, it was in a worse neighborhood uh, and just dirty. Whereas this, even though it's dirty, it can be cleaned up and it's going to look brand new. Um, and you've got windows that look out on the back here, so you don't have to worry about the foot traffic, of which there is a lot, foot traffic and car traffic outside. Um, I got another present for you. What is this? It's a reset, said... to be honest. Ah, be honest. you know what this is? Books one and two of the Gatewalker's Adventure Path. Yes. Well, this is exciting. It's too bad that I've decided. Oh, you bent the page. I've decided to pivot to another Adventure Path. <laughs> but this will still. Oh, way. I already bent a page. Brutal. That's Can you ask for another one? I'm skipping book one anyways. Such a jerk. Nice. Oh, oh, babe, she's still nice and cold. This is great. If I didn't have to drive, I'd drink all four of these right now. <laughs> They're nine and a half percent. You drink all four of them right now. <laughs> I it, feel terrible. Even if you didn't have to drive, you'd still feel terrible. Yeah, St. Pat's. Yeah, so we're going to have a, 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 cus a custom table built that's not a gaming table. We may get 
a gaming table someday, but right now we just need a bucket table so we can start uh, recording. And uh, we've never really, even Giant Slayer, we were all sitting at our own little tables, which was nice, but this is going to be a much more intimate experience. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I want to get too much into how it's going to be shot, but we're all going to be sitting around a round table, which is going to be, that's the way it's meant to be played. With this, I, I, I think you'll never have to worry about being uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, even with me taking the lion's share of this side of the table, if we take these two chairs and, like you said, just kind of fan them out a little bit, everyone's going to have their own little setup, which is yeah. nice. Everyone's station should feel unique. You know, Skid was always great at that. It was never shown on camera because it was Giant Slayer, but his station was, was a Skid station. It was um, the only thing in his life that was meticulous. Yeah. Extremely clean. <laughs> but that you know that's important you should feel like when you come in you know right now only one show is going to be shot in here eventually hopefully we'll have lots of different shows but you should come in and feel like this is your station and damn it keep your station clean <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to be in here now because we can go back and look at this later and it's going to seem crazy that this is how it started in like a completely empty unfinished co unsealed concrete Floor. It's like sitting on chalk. It's just like it's getting on everything. It's on my hands. It's so we have to have a cleaning crew come in and just clean it first and then epoxy no, it? I'm just going to clean it. You're just going to clean it? Do you know how to clean? I know Sometimes. how to sweep. It's what just... about a mop? What about a nice mop job? I can, I can mop. You can't mop? It's a big space to mop. You don't mop your house? Not anymore. Cleaning service. I believe hired people to do <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should be, by the time Gatewalkers is shooting, it should be unrecognizable. Do you expect to do something that's different for Session Zero? Like, will it actually be more raw than Episode One, or...? Yeah, no, I want Session Zero to happen pretty soon in the space. Just kind of as Folding chairs and tape. Right, with, <laughs> with some sort of sound dampening, though, because, like, even right now, you can really hear the echo. Yeah. Are you excited to start the session? Like yeah. start the new adventure? Yeah. Yeah. Big time. What are you most excited about? My character. Yeah? Which I like, I wasn't decided on until we had that session. A week ago, less than that a week pre ago. pre-session, session zero. Because I hadn't like decided, you know what I mean? It was like, like 19 different things I could do. But then once everybody started slotting into roles and I got mine, I was like, all right, now I'm going to take this and just run with it. And uh, I really did and I'm like juiced now about it. Do you have any things that you're excited about that are non-selfish? <laughs> <laughs> you know, something that isn't just focused on you. Yeah, I am excited to play in person again. Yeah. And to have an edited video show. Which is something that we haven't done really before, you know. Our videos are raw, and that's good, because it's, it's actual play. It's like, huh, this is just us playing. Like, that's what it is. And that has its place. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just feel like I'm ready for something new. I'm ready to go back to what we were originally doing with Giant Slayer, where it was like we were meticulously trimming the fat off of that show. And it wasn't just the game. Sometimes it was trimming banter, you know, a joke that didn't land or whatever. Yeah. And I'm excited to get back to that in video format with high-quality cameras, good lighting, and see how that all comes together. It's, it's a mystery to me because we've never, I've never done real video editing. I've done a lot of audio editing, but not video. Yeah. And now we've got a real professional <laughs> to do it. And so I'm really excited. For yeah, that. I think what excites me is like, this is kind of what I've always wanted to do. Like when we were starting out with Giant Slayer and I was complaining to you about like, I don't want to be a podcaster. And you were like, well, just, you've got the audience. Now, now we're at the point now where we're getting closer to doing what I actually want to do. You know, I came from the um, performance side, but like when I stopped bartending, I was doing a lot of video editing, video shooting and stuff. So that's always been a, something I've been interested in. And now it's kind of all coming together. So yeah, I'm excited. So you'd say that you have a face for television. You know, that's what I've been told. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I say it so much as several casting directors. <laughs> Several well-known and respected New York City casting directors right. um, have said to me, I don't see you as a podcaster. You're just too pretty. 
No one wants to be told they have a face for podcasting. <laughs> no uh, episode of this new show is going to get more views or listens than episode one. And I get that, but I think a lot of people, creators especially, will put off doing that, one, out of fear, whether they admit it or not, and two, out of like, everything's going to be perfect. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, you know what I mean? The content is what I know is always going to be the best that we can do. If the lighting isn't perfect or like, oh, that shot was a little bit blurry, that's okay. I want that to be part of the process. I really want us to learn how to do this so that um, things get better and better and better along the way because what people tune in for, the, the camaraderie, the friendships, the stories that we tell, we could do that in a, in a, in a room just like this, empty. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, that other stuff is great. It adds production value but it doesn't really matter. I agree. Um, clip that so that when he has an absolute meltdown because there's a blurry shot in one of the episodes, just play it back to him. Remember when you thought the game was the most important thing? I could never get Not mad. the production value. <laughs> I could never get mad at Matt. <laughs> you could clip that too. <laughs>